Hey guys, Sleepy Reader here, Damien. Um, I'm coming at you in a bit of a grumpy mood. I, after reading Watchmen, which I did kind of in maybe too great of a depth because I was involved in this tag team review of the 12 issues of Watchmen, I'm having trouble reading comic books, or uh, more to the point, I'm having trouble reading superhero comic books. Um, I'm finding myself, I'm just really grumpy about it. Uh, I'm just not happy with what I'm reading and I, I feel like the other makers of comic books are lazy or, or just, um, or that superheroes are stupid. Um, but I don't really think that. I mean, I love superheroes. So I just at the moment feel quite grumpy. I was reading uh, this Batman annual, which under other circumstances, I think what I would enjoy it. It's a lovely little comic book that uh, relates the uh, relates or re redoes the origin of a uh, classic villain, Mr. Freeze, and it it moves interestingly through time, and it it's always fun to focus on the villain. It has lots of cool scenes, but it it has and it has a big revelation at the end. But it seemed to get to its revelation too easily, and it didn't make enough of it, and it didn't give us as many layers of what all this means about Dr. Freeze or what it might mean to Batman or to other things in comic book in, uh, in the Batman DC universe. It, it just seemed thin compared to Watchmen. Um, and it seemed like someone like Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, um, the authors of Watchmen, tried harder. They pushed that to that extra level. They said, what else can we put in here? How else can we um, make this story richer. Um, and it seems like if, if the writer Scott Snyder had tried a little harder, he had lots of great elements in here and he could have given us even more in the same number of pages. Um, I have no complaints about the artist in this particular case. Um, I don't really know what the process is. I kind of get the feeling of, 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 uh, of minimal um, collaboration between artist and writer that probably the writer wrote this script and then the artist illustrated it. But I could be I could be all wrong on that. But another one of the strong feelings from Watchmen is of this incredible collaboration between writer and artist. Um, I read Minutemen and I love Darwin Cook's artwork and I just I couldn't even know how to react to it. One minute I loved it, the next minute I it seemed totally flat and meaningless to me. Um, with uh, with um, Darwin Cook, who's also the writer, not taking any chances, it seems, in the first issue and not having anything new to say, um, just telling us exactly what we already know from The Watchmen. And another part of me thought, oh, well, that'll be fun because I enjoyed Watchmen and, and this will just be a new way to enjoy the same story. And isn't that a lot of the times what comic books is about? But it, it just it wasn't clicking for me so well this time. Um, and I... It does seem like Alan Moore works harder. Um, it also sometimes seems like he's a genius, and I kind of played on that idea in my review. I do think there, there are kind of two kinds of geniuses, um, and it's hard to be the first kind, the kind of the primary kind who comes up with a brand new idea and does something that no one ever thought of before. Maybe, you know, uh, the creators of Superman, Siegel and Schuster, or a lot of the Jack Kirby work. Or you know, going back into literature, the creators of Gilgamesh and mythology, or King Arthur, or um, Beowulf, and and in science fiction, you know, Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, and some of the people in the golden age of science fiction who came up with this stuff first, the first people to think of a galactic empire and stuff. To me, those are kind of the primary geniuses, primal geniuses who come up with something new. And then there's the refiners. Um, and they may be equally as brilliant or maybe more brilliant but less lucky, lucky to uh, not have created something brand new. Um, but I think Alan Moore is definitely in that level. And I think you can look at those people and see what they're doing. You can see them building up the layers and connecting the dots and stuff. I suppose in literature, Shakespeare is the ultimate, you know, secondary genius. The, uh, he didn't tell any original stories and he reused everybody's ideas, but he still combined it in such a way that, that tons of people think is, is genius. Um, <clears throat> so does Watchmen make me feel like comic books are dumb or that superheroes are dumb? 
Um, hopefully this will kind of pass. Uh, it, reading this takes me back. I remember drifting into a comic book store at some period when I didn't have that much money and finding some early issue of Watchmen and puzzling over it. And I think I bought one issue, maybe issue two or three or four, and reading it and then only, and not getting it at first, and only clicking when I started reading the material at the back and, and realizing I was reading something uh, with rich layers and ambitions beyond the regular comic book. And, uh, you know, sometimes old comic books would have these little text pieces about the hero or something that, that weren't really that important to the story. They were just filler or there was something about the postal regulations back then that you needed to have that um, text in it. But um, <clears throat> but after you know puzzling over that issue of Watchmen, I realized something more was going on here, and I was able to get the other issues. And as soon as the um, the trade came out, I bought that. It may be the first trade I ever bought that I can remember. Well, Son of Origins and Origins of Marvel Comics, but the first sort of trade graphic novel that I bought. Um, and then I lent it to tons of people. I almost didn't get it back many times, um, but <clears throat> but once I got used to Watchmen, it wasn't a total surprise. There was kind of a revolution going on, I think, in comic books at that time, um, and it had been going on for a number of years. And what it was was the comic book stores were taking over, and you could sell direct only comic books to the comic book stores and make money off of that. And that allowed people to do a lot more experimenting. It was the first time you really saw these maxi series and mini series and things intended to be one off graphic novels, uh, things that would have a beginning and an end and and that imagined a, a readership who really cared about comic books rather than just imagining kids finding comic books on spinner racks and and growing out of them within a half a year or something um, <clears throat> and I think that created a huge renaissance in comic books, and maybe ultimately it was comic books' doom too, um, as it have slowly cut cut it cut comic books off from uh, renewing its audience with kids, uh, and it became more and more aimed at the people who already knew about comics. But at first, uh, there were incredible things being done, and I think it, you know, I don't think that uh, Watchmen ruined comic books. I think it opened the way for lots of people to, as writers to take it seriously and readers to take it seriously and to look for uh, more comic books that meant something. Um, and I don't know if that slipped away from us a little bit. I don't really think it does. I think I've just become grumpy about it right now. I hope that's it. Um, and I've just, you know, noticed the comic books that aren't trying very hard. Uh, you know, I think that Watchmen is not only a great comic book, it's probably a great science fiction novel, maybe one of the greatest science fiction novels I've ever read. It's just so complete. There's so much going on in it. It makes such a big commentary about human nature, um, human progress, and satirizes politics and human relationships and motivations. Um, so, where does that leave me? Um, anyway, I think I'll feel better after <laughs> I've vented this. Um, so uh, thanks for, for listening, and uh, I'll try to get back to some normal reviews soon.